Uh, welcome to JDL TV. Um, th this one surprised me a little bit as far as a, um, a tweet that I posted that got over 50 likes. Um, and it was a, a Doppler example. Uh, no video was attached to this. But I thought I would discuss it anyway because it generated a lot of discussion. Um, I, I posed the question of um, what possibilities could this be since this is a uh, descending thoracic aorta pulse wave uh, Doppler. Um, it, the differential quickly you start thinking about is uh, aortic regurgitation, um, possibly coarctation or you know something else. I threw in there a couple of oddballs, which is um, peripheral artery disease and cardiomyopathy. And so I thought I would just briefly discuss these uh, various features and what they would look like. Um, the salient features on this example are the regular rhythm um, that's coming along, but the variability in the um, uh, pulse wave velocity and total uh, velocity time integral that can be seen. Um, if you take a look at um, the scale over here, uh, normally you should have a flow over um, 60 centimeters per second, and the higher velocity never gets close to 60, and this lower velocity is actually closer to 30 centimeters per second. So this is very, very low output that at times, beat to beat, it's even significantly lower um, than on the previous beats. Um, the other um, image on the right was just a zoom showing again um, the high variability from beat to beat, which is really atypical and can't be thought of as due to anything other than pulses alternans. Um, coarctation would give you a high velocity and a persistent um, antegrade diastolic flow, which this does not show. Severe aortic regurge would give you significant flow above the baseline, opposite to the direction of the flow going down the descending aorta. And some people thought this was aortic regurge, and I can see why you might think that, but um, you notice it's kind of equal to the flow on the other direction. This just represents noise and artifact. Um, and because the velocities are so low, the artifacts seem like a higher velocity relative to the actual low velocity of the normal physiologic flow. Uh, peripheral artery disease um, gives you a stiff artery, and therefore you can see sometimes a recoil of uh, flow in the opposite direction and get fooled into aortic regurgitation. Um, but in peripheral artery disease, you won't have as high a velocity uh, that you would get in aortic regurgitation, which should exceed 60 centimeters per second uh, at the beginning and over, say, 20 to 40 um, centimeters per second at the end. Um, that's what aortic regurgitation would give you, but not uh, peripheral artery disease. And then um, this was just a catch-all phrase, the uh, something else, and give you time to think about different options. And I think some of the things people suggested were um, good thoughts, like uh, intraortic balloon pump or ventricular assist device, um, which this patient may have benefited from, uh, but wouldn't give you a, this type of pattern. So again, just a quick discussion on what pulses uh, alternans looks like, but in a place that we don't normally look for it, which is the descending thoracic aorta. Um, I'm absolutely certain that this patient on physical exam would have had a true pulses alternans um, that would have been able to be felt uh, by peripheral pulse, usually in the femoral artery. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this discussion on JDEL TV.